What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So today we're just going to be um, probably trying to diagnose this Chinese scooter. So I got this scooter for 100 quid, 100 pound, 100 notes. Um, the guy said he, he puts the key in, he turns it and it doesn't come on. He said it's been sitting for about 9, 10 months outside in all weathers. It's full of cobwebs over it. don't know why I'm really sitting on it. I don't really like spiders, but it's full of cobwebs on it. I've got the key, when you twist it, there's no sign of life. So um, I'm going to be going through the stages of what I normally do when I first get bikes like these and like just sort of going through the diagnosis stage and um, yeah, I'm just going to show you what I do myself and I'm going to pull it up as a, maybe a how-to video or how I do just, um, just to see if it helps anyone out in the future. So um, the first thing I always do when I get bikes like these, before I even put the key in them, try and start them is I check the oil. So we're going to go ahead and do that first. Right, so I'm just going to check the oil on this bike. Bruno, go away. God, there's cobwebs literally everywhere. I'm just waiting for a big false widow to jump out and bite me, mate. Right, so old rag. Pull your dipstick out. And that is dry, so that is not a good sign. Honestly, it's not a good sign. Oh, got a tiny bit in there. Tiniest little bit of oil in there. So um, instantly, that is a bad sign for me because if you ain't got no oil in a the bike, then you're probably gonna. It's probably seized up. I'm not gonna panic too much, but what I will do is I'm gonna top this oil up. I'm not gonna bother oil, doing an oil change until I know the bike is worth it, because an oil change can cost like just the oil is only a tenner, but. You've got to think about it like it's profit in it. So I'm just going to check the oil. I mean, not check the oil. I'm just going to top the oil up for the minute just to put some um, a little top up in there. And if it if I do get this bike running, obviously I will change it to fresh oil. So let me just go and get some good quality oil. Got some laying about somewhere. Where's my cash drawer? There we go. Oh, there's so many cobwebs, literally. Right. Still really low, so this is dangerously low, really. Yep, so we're nearly full. So that's just had about 350 millilitres of oil and it is now topped up, which is good. So um, that's just a temporary measure. If the bike is a good runner, then obviously I will do a full oil change with good quality oil. Right. So now we know we've got oil in the um, bike, the next thing I normally do is take the spark plug off, shoot a little bit of two stroke or a little bit of oil down there and then we're going to go check the electrics so what I'm going to do now I'm going to do it off camera because I'm trying to keep this video short and sweet is I'm going to take this spark plug off I'm then going to put a little bit of two stroke down the cylinder put the spark plug back on and then I'm going to go and check electrics so I'm going to do that off camera see you in a minute So on this particular Chinese scooter, this is a Lexmoto FMS 2015 plate and the battery is located just here where you put your feet and it's two Phillips screws. These are a little bit rusted so what I am going to quickly do is just whack a little bit of bog standard DP60 on them to loosen them up a little bit just so I don't have to draw them out or nothing like that because that is long and I don't like doing that. So just some bog standard DP60, £1.29 from your local DIY stop, shop, sorry. Save me having to like pop any plastics off or just go to that. So 
one. And that's two. I just get a flattered screwdriver just to pop that out. keep the screws together so you don't lose them. So just looking at this, obviously it's taken a little bit of water damage because if you see that there, that's rusted and that's rusted. So again, I'm gonna whack a bit of DP60 on it to try and loosen it up. Just let that soak for a minute, let it do its job. Um, at this stage, before I go ahead and take all the battery out, I normally, you don't have to, but I normally get my multimeter out and just check to see if it's got any life left in it at all. And if it does have, what I normally then do is leave the battery in the bike, um, charge the battery up while it's in the bike, or I'll take the battery out and charge the battery up separately and put a jump pack on. So I'm just going to get my multimeter. up so you can see it. Hopefully you can see that. Let's so check this. So it's reading. Just over nine volts. Now um I can't remember what the uh amount was for it to be savable but I'm just going to whack it on charge anyway, see if I can bring it back to life. At the minute, I'm just going to quickly uh, connect up a jump pack because I do need to find out if I've got any um, like earth problems, connections or anything like that because obviously there is quite a bit of corrosion and rust and that can cause it to um, have disconnections. So let me just get my jump pack. Connect that up. It's going to be a bit awkward, but I'm sure we'll manage it. So. There we go. So that should be a good connection. I'm trying to turn it on now. That's it. Right. I'm just going to get the camera set up just so you can see if I've got an electric or not. So just bear with me one second. Right, so jump pack connected, just going to um, put the key in the ignition and just check for any signs of life really. So I normally just try and press the horn first. Alright, that's good, we've got a horn. Um, obviously, off camera I'll put some two stroke down the uh, cylinder just to lubricate it a little bit because I don't know how long this has actually been sitting for. But now I'm going to attempt to turn it over. Hopefully it does. Well, it's turning over and it don't sound that bad, to be honest with you. So, um, we've got electric. Um, seems to me the throttle seized up, so um, that's something I've got to look at. And also, the kickstart down here, I don't know whether it's jammed or it's seized, but it does not look healthy. So that's something else I also have to look at. Right, so now I'm just going to go through the stages of diagnosing the bike. So, what do you need to start a bike? So we'll start off with spark. You need spark to spark an ignition. And then um, what do you need after that? You need fuel. Fuel to obviously ignite with the spark. And you need air as well. So 
What should I take first? Oh, I don't really know. Um, let me have a think. I want to check Spark first, and then I will be looking at fuel. So, in order to check Spark plug, so the next stage is I'm going to check some Spark. In order to do that, I need to. I've already, um, obviously, as you can see, I've uh, unscrewed it. I need to move this panel out of the way, it's just so I've got some access to it. Oh my god! Spiders. Right, I think we're riddled, guys. Oh, that gave me like a feeling down my neck, man. Right. I'll get a pair of gloves on. Oh my god, there's another one. So what I'm going to do, before I attempt to take this spark plug out, I'm just going to squirt a bit of penetrating fluid just near the thread because I can't actually see inside there properly. So uh, I just want to be careful that I don't obviously snap the spark plug or anything like that because I have done that in the uh, past and it's very horrible just to like, deal with that stuff. Now I'm going to go and draw for my health as advance. Right, let's check what size that is. That's quite a small one, isn't it? Let's try this one. Yep, there we go. So just, when you're doing this, um, there's no rush. Do take your time with it. It'll come out quite easily. It feels a bit stiff in there though, I'm not gonna lie. See if I've got a spare spark club here. Focus. That could do a replacement. Right, now to check spark. So how you check spark, there's a few ways to do it. What I normally do, get your close up look, is you take the spark plug out, get the coil, connect it back up. And then what I do is I bridge it against some metal. Sometimes it is quite hard to see and uh, I do need to connect up the jump pad quickly. So just bear with me and let me connect up the jump pad and we're back in. Okay, so. I've cable tied the back brake down to hold it in because I'm only, I'm only on my own at the minute. 
and I've gonna check spark. So what I do to check spark normally, I can not put it in the camera, sorry guys, is I bridge it towards a bit of metal like this. And Doesn't look like it's getting sparked to me. No, it's not, it's not getting sparked. And what could we do? We could try and just clean it up a little bit. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get my contact cleaner out and I'm just gonna quickly clean up the connections and then I will be back to check spark again. So I'll see you in a minute. So this is the wire to the coil. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna snip a little bit off the end and just test it, just to see if there's spark coming at all. So bear with me, I'm just going to get my snippers. That's not it. So let me just quickly further investigate this and I'll be back with you in a second. Just to quickly show you what I meant about earlier, before you go to start your bike when it's been sitting for ages, what I normally do is like this is um just a little oil canister. It's got some two stroke in it. So I shoot a bit of two stroke down the head. I can bloody get it in there. Also spray a little bit of lubricant or something down there. Get a bit of that down there. Turn it over a few times just to loosen it up. That's very good practice. Right, I'm just going to uh, quickly investigate a few things off camera because it does get a bit boring and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so a nice quick contact clean through all the connections and... A nice strong spark. So um, just remember, in this stage, if you're not getting sparked, do not panic. Go to Halfords, go get a tin of, where's it gone? A tin of, go get a tin of electrical cleaner. Don't even need to go to Halfords, you can just go to the cheap, any cheap DIY shop and get this. Um, I prefer Halfords, like even my uh, jump packs from Halfords. But I didn't actually buy it from Halfords, bought it second hand. Right. So, yeah, we have spark now, so we can rule that out. So, what I done was I cleaned the connections, literally all of them, unplugged them, cleaned them all. Um, I, obviously, you see me, I snipped this back and got a bit of fresh um, thingy. So, next thing I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to squirt a little bit of easy start down the cylinder and I'm going to see if we can get it to fire up just for a minute. And if it does fire up, with a little bit of, oh, I was going to say premix then, with a little bit of um, fuel down it, if it does fire up, then, then we know it's fuel starvation. So bear with me, just going to put everything back on and I'll be back in a second. So obviously I've snipped this to get a better connection now. Yeah. 
What? Yeah, I'm going to sort of say, yeah? I think you are, you're 3.05, wasn't it? What's 3.20? You know 3.05 when you got another hour this week? Uh, I think so. I can't remember, to be honest with me. Get your eyes off you, mate. I can't remember if it goes on live. I started like that, mate. Tell me if I'm wrong guys, I think I've put that on the right way. Always change it back anyway, can't I? You can all agree with me that that is a very strong spot right now. Um, as I said, I'm going to shoot a little bit of uh, premix down the cylinder, just see if I can get it started. I've got any left, that is. Just to see if I can get it down the Squirt a little bit of petrol just down the cylinder. It's probably going to blow up. Bless you, Bruno. Hopefully, this thing fires up. With a bit of luck. that smoke do not be alarmed that there is my product so obviously I did squirt some stuff on it and uh, yeah so just don't be alarmed about that but there you go started up and you never know that little start up might have cleared the jets out and everything but um, we'll soon find out So it's definitely fuel related. If you can get it running, it is a good idea to try and let it clear itself out, just at first. Because obviously I have checked the fuel, and the fuel doesn't smell too bad. But I'm probably just being a cheapskate. Remember, we put 
some um, good quality oil in there and that will be mixing up with the old oil and that will be getting about and loosening everything up it's also got some two stroke down the edge and um, oh man I'm actually really happy man We've got it going Look at it, it's a throttle piece. Damn. Look at that. Let it burn off all the old crap, eh? See about 100 spiders start running out. So, I'm not going to lie to you, I did have doubts because as soon as I see there was like the tiniest little bit of oil in it, um, I just automatically assumed it was all seized up and it needed a top end rebuild and that's why I bought it so cheap, just so I'd have a little bit of money just to buy it, a piston kit if I needed to or a cylinder kit or whatever. But it turns out it wasn't getting spark. Um, so a snip of the, uh, the wire off the coils or whatever it's called and a clean up of all the connections and it got, now it's got a strong spark and all I've got to do is just put it in under that way that goes the wrong way like that and I've let it run for about 10 minutes just so just to let everything clear everything out because now we've done that, we probably ain't going to have to take the um, carb off. Obviously, when I do eventually test ride this, if it does bog out and I get any flat spots, I will be doing a carb clean. But, have you ever heard the phrase, don't break it? Um, <laughs> what, what, what's the phrase, man? I can't remember. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. So, yeah, I'm not going to fix it. I fixed the issue that, was having, that it was having with the um, spark issue. And that is now sorted out. And the only thing that slightly pissed me off a little bit is if you look down there, you see that big burn hole in my Alpha's Advance? I had it leaning against the exhaust, and I was thinking, oh yeah, that smokes, that's normal, that is. And then I realised my bloody Alpha's Advance was on fire. <laughs> but yeah, battle scars, isn't it? So I think I'm going to leave it there for the minute and um, on the next video we'll be having a look at that throttle and possibly going for a test ride. So I hope you like this little video and I hope it helped you in any way. Thanks for hanging out and I'll see you soon. Cheers guys, don't forget to subscribe.